Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox, your instructor for Big Data Applications and Analytics, a uh, course in the Indiana University Data Science Curriculum. This is the course motivation, which is sort of an, an overview of even conclusions of the course. And it came from a general talk I gave uh, on focused on the economy and the, and the relevance of big data in the cloud. But this sort of modified to be uh, appropriate for this class. Um, so I'm at Indiana University. If you need to contact me, you can send me email here. This is my website telling you what I do in, in life, and or at least in research. And so this is lesson one of unit two. <coughs> and unit two is part of section one. And unit one of section one is the introduction to the course going through all the units. So now we, this is, so that was the header for the slide deck. And now we go to some general remarks, which is the introduction, the first uh, 12 slides. And uh, let's get going on this. We will uh, introduce the hype curves, a, fam a famous Gartner invention that's uh, very helpful for Track what you do, how life is going. So this is, if you like, the summary of this um, full um, unit, which has some 140 slides. And so we have all this data being gathered. And those data involve people and machines. Machines talking to machines, people talking to machines, and vice versa. Smartphones, smart homes. Intelligent vehicles, we have science with satellites and accelerators. And uh, particles and photons are interacting with each other. That's what, if you like, accelerators do. They look at the, not people interacting with machines or what have you. They look at particles interacting with particles. Uh, we store this whole stuff in immense clouds. Uh, we hope to co-locate storage and computing, but that's not so easy. The computing on the data does analytics, which converts data to information, to knowledge, to wisdom. Uh, and then finally, after wisdom, we get either decisions or community consensus or not or, or, or um, insight. And then we have data mining, which emphasizes the fact that sometimes we just look totally in an unstructured fashion to see what the what the proverbial knowledge diamonds are there are in the data rough which is data mining. And so this is disruptive. And this disruptive transforma transformation is driving economy and vice versa. And it's creating millions of jobs in the area of data science, which is the topic of this course. And we look at the um, revolution, its implications for research, education, et cetera. So here's some trends. Well, big data is the data deluge. Data is pouring now. We have whatever it is, 1.8 billion photos uploaded every day into the cloud from Facebook and whatever it is, or Snapchat or whatever it is. And um, we have uh, search. We have Amazon. We have Netflix. We have scientific applications like the Large Hadron Collider with 15 petabytes a year and so on. So that's the data deluge. We have things getting smaller, which is chips. And the reason why we can process more data is the chips are getting smaller. And therefore, in a given volume or for a given amount of money, we can put more chips and therefore process more. And then originally with chips, they got faster and smaller. Now they just get smaller. So actually, uh, faster and smaller was three degrees of improvement because you have x and y of the uh, physical construction of the chip, and uh, t for the um, clock speed. Now the clock speed of the chips is, is more or less constant, but the feature size is continuing to decrease. So that gives you Moore's law, the continuing amount of computing. Because everything is getting smaller, we have to take a chip, which is whatever it is, a centimeter or so uh, the type dimensions. And we can put more cores in there because the cores are getting smaller. So um, we don't really want chips which are, which are 
millimeter by a millimeter, so we are making cores smaller. We're making lots of cores in the given chip. And this is also driving, because we can get the same amount of computing in a smaller space, is driving these so-called lightweight clients, such as phones and tablets and sensors. And then in the back end, <coughs> when we all these tiny things lying around in the on the front end, because that's what the multi-core uh, revolution is telling you, uh, we don't really f need lots of parallel computing on clients. We can do some, but not enormous. So we tend to make clients smaller. But servers in the back end are fine, because they can process lots and lots and lots of clients. And so servers use multi-core to process lots of clients. So in the trivialist model, when you're Nifty new 18-core uh, Haswell chip, you can process 18 simultaneous things going on from clients on the Internet. And all of this is helping uh, you lot because there are new jobs with new curricula, which is mainly in universities which never like to change, might have to change. They probably won't actually. And we need to look at clouds, or which is part of distributed systems, and therefore changes that course. And we have this somewhat new area called data science. All right, here we have the famous Gartner. We have 2012, 13, and 14. And let's look at some key things. Here's big data. And it's in 2012, it was still in the technology trigger. Uh, we have cloud computing is a little older. Here's private cloud computing, which actually is going to disappear for some reason. Uh, maybe because it's actually now private cloud computing. So you run a cloud inside your organization. Now actually, universities are actually just getting into doing that. But uh, I think enterprises have realized that that's not a terribly good idea. You know, they might as well do real cloud computing where they share resources and get economy of scale. What are those clouds running? Well, they're running analytics. We have various forms of analytics here, in-memory, text, predictive. Uh, actually, data analytics is revolutionizing speech recognition. I didn't highlight that with a red uh, red uh, arrow. Speech recognition is being re revolutionized by deep learning. All right, and here we have tablets, which are, of course enabled by multicore. So here we have all these things popping around. There's other things like important nifty 3D printing. There's another analytics, social analytics, and so on. Okay, so that's 2012. And in 2012, they had the largest number of technology. You can see it's pretty crowded, 48. 2008 was the lowest at 27. And they said 2012 was some sort of tipping point. But the scenarios they'd been chatting around and predicting finally started to take hold. <coughs> and that's one of the key problems, actually, in making predictions. You sort of know are actually probably the general direction. Like, we're bound to have smart homes, but you're not quite certain when the price and ease of use of technologies is such that they're going to happen. Because people are not going to put sensors in their homes if they're hard to use, expensive, and don't really produce huge value. So, that time is the critical problem. It's hard to predict. Now we have 2013, somewhat fewer. Technologies, a little cleaner. <coughs> here we have big data, it's inching up just below the top here. Um, 3D printing still up here near the top. Now we have these uh, things predict uh, here, predictive analytics around here in memory analytics. Cloud computing is nearing the bottom. It's uh, some things disappear into the trough of disillusionment, but uh, the things we're discussing are going to whip through here and up into here. After being overhyped and sort of and then attacked, then people actually realize they're very valuable and they rise through this slope of enlightenment and plateau of productivity. And we have in memory database systems, very important. That cloud software technology, Memcached Memcache D is a, a good example of that. And, um, and then you want to put things in memory just to save time. Um, rushing off to disk to look something up is. Uh, Time consuming. Now we have 2014. Uh, this came out uh, this August, August 
I should point out these Gartner charts are not so trivial to get because uh, Gartner charges an arm and a leg to uh, to get their reports, and so I wait till the they're, they're published. Uh, excerpts are published in blogs and things like that. So where are we? Well, we actually exciting data science has appeared, and it's coming up here. It's in the innovation trigger, so that's good. We're on the leading edge. Internet of Things is up here. Uh, prescription analytics, uh, prescriptive analytics is here. Uh, speed recognition we saw last time. 3D scanners, 3D printing really taking off. In-memory analytics, another analytics. Cloud computing is still progressing through this trough. Maybe we have in-memory database management systems in roughly the same place as before. And here's big data, it's fallen off the top. It's come through the top of where it was last time and going on down. But there's nothing, I mean, according to Ghana, everything takes this cycle, whether it's super or, or useless. And therefore, the fact it's going down is not negative. It just got to go down to go up. That's the nature of this uh, universal cycle. And big data is five to ten years, the dark blue. Um, cloud computing is light blue, two to five years. Well, we didn't get much detail on what's happening in 2014, but in 2013, they went through some analysis of the types of um, revolution you'll see. And then you'll have machines understanding humans, so that's machines analyzing what's happening to humans and the world. Uh, we have humans understanding machines, and machines and humans together becoming smarter. And we have examples of those uh, approaches. Uh, in particular, for machines and humans becoming faster and smarter, we have quantum computing, this so called prescriptive analytics, neuro business, big data, that's what we're doing here. Uh, complex event processing, a rather technical term. Everything in life is event processing. That's what the Internet of Things or, or just the way uh, just in time work goes. In-memory databases, we already discussed cloud computing, predictive analytics, and in-memory analytics. These are um, either telling you what to do or, predict, or giving you advice as to what to do. And uh, these are the areas that are driving humans and machines getting far smarter. And that's what's covered in this course. So maybe you'll be smarter at the end of this course. Or maybe you decide you don't want to get smarter, and therefore you can give this course a miss. Fine. IBM Watson, of course, is a famous computer that uh, competed in jeopardy and uh, used very interesting technologies to be able to answer those questions. Here's a nice um, thing, which again, I haven't got in 2014, because this was not put on a blog. And which is the so-called priority matrix. And then we have cloud computing. So this is transformational, high, moderate, low is the type of benefit. And here's the years to mainstream. So cloud computing and enterprise 3D printing are transformational and two to five years. And in-memory database management system is essentially a subset of cloud computing. Um, Five to ten years, we have uh, more bioprinting, big data, content analytics, more 3D printing. Uh, this uh, mysterious complex events processing, I don't quite see that as in the same league as the above. Machine to machine is certainly important. I, I don't see why it's so difficult for them to communicate. Robots are enabled by clouds, because clouds control robots. Autonomous vehicles are the most obvious, uh, drones, self-driving cars, and so on. And here we have uh, Watson answering questions. Internet of Things is certainly happening now, and some things are very pervasively available, webcams, smartphones, etc. Quantum computing truly is far out. I find it interesting the brain computer interface has moderate benefit. It's almost worth, I mean, and also the speech recognition has moderate benefit. It's sort of interesting what's not so promising. Still, we're not studying those in great detail, so it's okay. Um, whether or not it's right or not. 
All right, let's go for it. Here's a nifty um, plot on the um, scale of things that comes from uh, uh, this uh, K KBCB. Um, Mika is the name of the lady who gives this talk, brilliant talk every year. Um, and this points out how every um, computing cycle, the installed base is 10 times greater than the previous cycle. And you start off with mainframes here. And here we have um, mobile internet. And later on, we'll have the Internet of Things. And uh, we have desktop internet. Remember, desktop and PCs are declining. And um, you know, we went through, I started with mainframes. I started actually with crummy computer. I mean, today's, you know, the very first computers in 1964, they weren't really mainframes. They were. I still. I remember. I, I used to have cards where we had to punch every hole in the card to actually tell the computer what to do, and it whipped around with its four kilobytes of main memory, and actually did useful things. That's what inspired me to take up computing. And uh, here we have the final slide, issues of importance. This will be explored uh, further on in the, uh, in the, um, this uh, talk, this uh, motivation talk. We have the economic imperative. There's lots of data and lots of jobs. The computing model, the industry adopted clouds. And so we really must know what a cloud is. Research model. But all this data is changing the way science is done. The so-called fourth paradigm of data-driven science. So we have lots of nifty new computing opportunities and new computing technologies and new computing algorithms. We have all the opportunities because all new fields are being opened up. X informatics for lots and lots of values of X uh, by invoked by applying fourth paradigm. I don't know to. To running a bus fleet, or as well as uh, finding new Higgs particles, and then here on a more modest fashion, um, humdrum, I should say, we have the fact that sort of internal to this talk, relevance for this talk, just in operationally, that data science is an issue of importance raised by uh, these uh, revolutions. So that's the uh, end of lesson one of unit two motivation. And so this is the introduction to the motivation. And the motivation is the motivation of the course, and sort of related to the introduction of the course. Uh, thank you very much. Jeffrey Fox signing out.